Uh, first of all, I'm a Congo, uh, Renita, Julian, thanks for being on today's panel. We come back, I'm sitting down talking with TMF uh, about their new single. And also, these are the folks who, for a long time, with Frankie Beverly and Mays. Now they're not. What happened? Let's break it down. We'll talk about it when we come back. Roll them up unfiltered right here on the Black Star Network. Folks, for years they were the band with Frankie Beverly and Mays. Now the Seven Brothers have uh, ventured on their own, added some other members and themselves, uh, calling themselves uh, TMF, the music forever. Joining me in the studio, uh, Rome, Daniel <laughs> Witherspoon, <laughs> Jubu, Chris Walker joins us from Houston. Calvin Knapper is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Vance Taylor is in Atlanta. Uh, and Bear Williams joins us from Chicago. So first of all, uh, gents, uh, glad to see y'all. How, how's it going? How are you? It's going all great, is well. Man. Good to see you. Living my best life. Okay, yeah. well, ain't that wrong? Living your best <laughs> life. Uh, so, so okay, so okay, so TMF stands for what? The Music Forever. It's an right. acronym for the Music Forever. All right, because in February when the release came out of y'all launching the tour, it was something else. It was right. Yes. The Maze right. Factor at the time. Uh -huh. It was the Maze Factor at the time. Gotcha. All right. So how do, so how did we get here? For the longest, I mean, you were one of the founding members of Maze, right? Yeah. All right. How long you were in the group for? How long? Twenty three years. Twenty three years. Two years. Two years. Uh, and who else uh, was with, who else is on? Uh, There's twenty years. Calvin's 13 years. Vance is 20 years as well. Got it. So it's a long, long time. Yeah. What happened? How did we get to this point? Well, I think Bear can explain that. Uh, All right. Bear? Bear, you got me? Good roller. All right. Yeah. Basically, um, let me just start by saying thank you for having us on. Thank you for allowing us to uh, clear the air, if you will, about this particular subject. Um, we had... Uh, basically a breakdown in communication with the new management company that took over after our former management um, suddenly passed away about almost two years ago. Now. Yep. And so there was a new management team brought in. Um, we did not know them. You know, we had been with the other team for as long as I've been there for 20 years, you know. And so um, they came in. They promised us you know, transparency. They promised us uh, open book, you know, open door policy. And at first, it, everything seemed like it was going to be just that. But as quickly, it started to deteriorate less, you know, less and less and less communication. And the communication thing finally came to a head. Um, we were scheduled, the band that you know now is TMF, we were scheduled to perform with Frankie at the uh, May 7th uh, performance of uh, Maze featuring Frankie Beverly at the NOLA Jazz and Heritage Festival. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, we, it, what happened with that was we did not perform um, because we had um, a labor dispute and management decided that, you know, basically it was not worth negotiating with us on it. And so they basically canceled our tickets, our flights. And so that was it. That was the end of Maze as you, as you have known it or fans have known it for 20 years. That's basically it. They, they let us go. And we have nothing but love for Frankie. We have nothing but that's the reason we decided to band together and continue on the legacy of the music. Frankie has not retired. We never said he was retired. We never said that, um, that he should have retired. We never tried to... Um, attempt a coup to to take over the band that was some things that it says there's been a lot of erroneous things said online about us which simply are not true um we have nothing but the utmost respect and love for frankie and uh, we just want to see we just wanted to see the music in our way continue and uh that's basically it um if anybody else wants to add anything they they certainly can but that's that's it from my perspective it was basically just a a labor dispute. Uh, you know, sometimes things don't work out. And was it was it painful? Sure, of course it was. It's a long, long time to be with someone, uh, you know, in that capacity and not, um, you know, end up with that person. You think you're going to be, you know, ending up that, you know, for the for the duration. 
and it just didn't work out that way. But we're, we're glad that we have um, been able to band together as a group and continue on with, with TMF. Of course, we've got the new single out, Making Love to the Music, and uh, that's, that's where we are, Roland. Um, it, it may was surprising and shocking to, to, to a lot of different people, and because you're talking about long-standing relationships. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, fifty-five years for me. Rome came up with the name names. Rome named the band. Mm -hmm. And uh, to add to 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 what Bear just said, the hurtful part was you have new people coming in that we didn't even know these people. We weren't even allowed to talk to Mr. Beverly. We weren't allowed to. We only saw him when we hit the stage. So it was just really, really weird. But we had all, always talked about the thing that kept us together was our love for each other. We just we have a, a strong love for each other. So, I mean, I was really saying, hey, man, let's keep playing. Let's keep playing the music. And ironically, when, when you broke the story, you text me the night before at 10 o'clock. And they will tell you, I'm nocturnal. That one particular night, I fall asleep. I wake up in the morning. I'm like, yo, I get a text from Roland, what's going on? And you say, hey man, what's going on? Next thing I turn on the TV and the story is out there. So that was, that was ironic, but because I had just saw you the week earlier yep. in Los Angeles. Yep. And so it, was, it really was, it was just a breakdown in management. And we really, me personally, I just felt it was very, very, disrespectful um, the way the, the new regime um, started to handle us. You know, basically, uh, we're, uh, you are uh, sidemen. And um, I was like, sidemen, if that's the case, then why are we on the pictures? Why are we on the t-shirts? Why are we on the website? Why are we, you know, I'm, I'm not a sideman. That's not what Frankie told me. Frankie said, we are, we are a band. You know, so it really was. It was a breakdown in management, and we were never able to speak to Mr. Beverly. And once again, like, like Bear said, the hurtful thing is we are a band of brothers, and we love that man. I'm, I mean, I love that man. I was playing with Whitney Houston. He called me himself, and I left immediately because I love this band, and I love that man. So that's the thing that's important to me that the people know that it's nothing against Mr. Beverly. Yeah, and more importantly, so, oh, go ahead. Uh, Correct. with this band, I mean, with these musicians, I mean, just phenomenal musicians and their body of work. I mean, if you went around the horn, they played yeah, they and jubilee. performed with some iconic people. Oh, and having that, uh, there was no it's way we jubilee. were going to just allow <clears throat> anything but us sticking together, even after Frank decided to retire. Our plan was always to continue as a band mm -hmm. and uh, uh, close a chapter and begin a new journey. Have y'all talked to Frankie since? No. no. No, I reached out to him. I left him a heartfelt message. Uh, but again, it's a lot of control on that end. A lot of control. And that has to be surprising. Uh, I mean, you because look, it's not like, you know, like some folks where they, they perform, you know, occasionally. Y'all on the road constantly. Y'all were forever. Uh, Nine I, months I, out of the year, easy. I forgot, uh, I, I'm sorry I forgot his name, but when, uh, wasn't he your drummer? When he had, y'all were on your... No, your, um, McKinley Williams. He was our uh, other yeah, percussionist. Percussion. Right, when, when they, and, and you were on tour. Yes. And he passed away. Y'all yeah. performed that. We were, in, we were in Tennessee. Yeah. We were in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And... Yeah. Um, they, um, they pronounced him passed at about 5 o'clock. He had a heart attack. He had a yeah. heart attack, and Frankie called each one of us individually, and he said, what do you guys think? And honestly, we all said McKinley would want to would wanna perform. And, I mean, we were all crying, and it was, it was crazy, but that might have been one of our best shows because <coughs> we, that's who he was. He was, a, he, he was a player. He played. You know, that's what he lived for. So we did that to mm -hmm. honor him. But it was tough. It was oh, tough. Of, of course. Um, and um, like, like I'll, like I'll say, when, when I got uh, a notification, I was kind of like, yo, what is this? Uh, and um, were you announcing this 
Um, you did your first um, your first uh, performance together. Uh, Christopher, that was in Atlanta, correct? Father's uh, Day. Justine Park. Yeah. Father's Day? Father's Anthony Day. Hamilton. Yeah, Anthony Hamilton. Chris? Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Just talk about, uh, again, uh, getting together and that, that first performance uh, in Atlanta. Well, you know, for me, that was, that was a bit scary because, uh, you know, the audience was so used to seeing these guys with Frankie for so many years. I was on pins and needles because, of course, you know, I'm a huge fan and I've been a fan for so many years. In fact, I, I, I got my start in the business working with Regina Bell and her first tour was opening for Maze featuring Frankie Beverly. I was 19 years old and I was singing a duet in the show with her. And many nights I would look in the wing and there would be Frankie standing there listening. And on a number of occasions, he came up to me and said, young man, keep doing what you're doing. You have a great voice. You're going to make it one day. Of course, fast forward, I never thought in a million years that I would be in this position working with (coughs) these incredible guys. So Chastain Park, we're there. We walk out on stage. The audience is sitting there with their arms folded, mean mugging us. (laughs) I mean, it was was tough. So the first four songs, you know. And and, and, and again, hold on. So again, for for the the audience to understand, um, and so this was the press release. So the uh, people, people at home probably said, "Okay, I don't see why they were uh, no, do not go. No, just stay on me. Uh, just understand, folks. Um, uh, this was the press release, and this is this is probably why they were like, "Man, what in the hell is going on?" Uh, and it was TML, formerly of Maze, featuring Franklin Beverly, kickoff tour in Atlanta, an all white affair. Uh, now you can go into it. An all-white affair starring Anthony Hamilton and the formerly of Maids featuring Frankie Beverly. Okay. And so then they had the photo as well. So the audience was probably like, what in the hell is going on? Is this like an imposter group? Because, look, those of us who understand music, uh, we know when the Temptations, when they sued Dennis Edwards, you've had the Spinners, you've had uh, these, these sort of different groups. Um, and so, Chris, go ahead. You said the audience was arms folded, looking like, oh, yeah, yeah what, what y'all going to do? Look here. So, so the first thing I said when, when I when I addressed them, I said, it's pretty obvious. We know who I'm not <laughs> and who I'm not trying to be. And I can't be. No one can ever replace Frankie Beverly. You know, so once they and y'all came out there in all that white. Well, well you know, <laughs> so they were really trying to cuss y'all out. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but, I, but I'll tell you, man, when after we of course, before we go on stage, we pray. And um, and the guys told me, they said, just speak from your heart. And after I addressed them, it was like pouring uh, water on on, hot water on ice. The audience, there was a shift in the atmosphere and and they and they embraced us. And from that moment on, they couldn't deny it. I mean, and people were out there, you know, you could see heads moving and the toes tapping. But they those first four songs, they were just confused and in their emotions. But after that, man, it was a party, and we ended the night with a standing let ovation. Me, let and, me, and let me let me jump in there. Yeah. Chris. So they would look at y'all like the guest preacher. Well, here's the here's the here's the thing though. Here's the thing. We we have pride too, and we knew we're the DNA for the last twenty plus years. We're the DNA, right? So when it got to golden time of day, and I walked out to do my part, I'm, I'm looking at the people like, y'all not gonna get with me? <laughs> y'all don't remember me? I'll solo for the rest of the night until y'all get until y'all, you know. So it was it was that it was that thing to where once Chris really did pour out his heart and tell these people, hey, we're not trying to replace Mr. Beverly. No one can do that. We just want to keep playing music, man. You know, and the people started. It was almost a point where they felt ignorant. They felt stupid holding a grudge like it's good music. Right. I think a lot of it was curiosity, too. You know, they had heard about us, but they actually wanted to see and us. And it's a tremendous amount of respect for Mr. Beverly, yeah. which we get. Yeah. You and, know. And one, one, and, and one thing I'm, I'll add, I asked, I said to the audience, you can't deny these guys. They've, they've been with him for 20 plus years. And all I said to the audience was, please just give me a chance. Right just, on. just, just, mm-hmm. just give me a chance. And, and they did. They opened up their hearts, man, and they, and they embraced us. Want to so. bring in uh, Calvin and Vance, uh, yeah. Calvin. Uh, go ahead. Your yeah. thoughts. I'm sorry. I said, Calvin, your thoughts. Go ahead. Oh, uh, well, like I said, uh, 
Barry said it best, and and there's nothing but we have nothing but love for Frankie Beverly, and I, and I love him. I've been in the band for uh, 13 years. Uh, I've learned a lot from him. You know, Frankie is actually uh, a lot of people may not notice, but he's actually you know he's a drummer, uh, and in a rehearsal or two, he sat on my kit to try to, you know, show me some things and whatever. But but no, I, I've learned a lot from him, and there's a lot of love uh, from us to him. And we just want to we just want to carry on the legacy of the music role, and that, that's all, while also, you know, creating our own music, you know, our own original music. And uh, so, which we're working on, and uh, we'll, we'll be putting music out, an album out in the first quarter of, of 2024. So, yeah, man, just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're just praying for God to uh, open the right doors and, and, and close the ones that are not meant for us. Vance? Amen to that. You know? Well, I want to mirror what everybody else said, man. It's been about love for me. Uh, ever since I've been with Frank, he showed me love, and then the audience showed us love. And now that we've moved on, we just want to still do the same thing. We really love Frankie. We love the audience. We just want to bring good music to the world, man. We just thank everybody for it those that have supported us and those that haven't understand that all we want to do is make you happy, you know, make you, make, you know, let show some of this love that we've all, we've had for these years. So that's where we are. Exactly. That's where we are. Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. I'm the youngest in the group. Uh, I was the youngest to come on. I was there about two years. Um, I didn't get the pleasure of interacting with Mr. Beverly when I first came in, I came in as a sub, uh, and I, I believe our first couple of rehearsals in Atlanta, he didn't even come. Yeah. Uh, so I really didn't even get to meet him until after the first performance. But then about a year later, I got a phone call from him uh, asking to be a part. And um, we've been there for two years and it was a good time. Uh, myself and Calvin have about 25 years of history together. Uh, I've known some of the guys together. And we've, we've just grown together and um, TMF has formed a great brotherhood and we're really excited to release some music mm -hmm. I, I'm, so um these people they, they think i never pay attention but i see everything uh and, and I, I would love to get your, your response to this because i think this is sort of what you talked about so this person named brother king lee this is interesting he goes the audience wants the real thing i love music for me it doesn't matter if i know the name of the musicians but the problem with that is the musicians were the one playing the music so it's, I mean, it's not like, it's not like when you're talking about, uh, I'll give you the perfect example. Uh, you mentioned performing with Whitney Houston. All right. So on her hit, I will always love you. I know because I love, I got all of his music. That's Kirk Whalem on saxophone. But the reality is you went to see Whitney Houston. The difference here is it was Mays featuring Frankie Beverly. Yes. You, you, it wasn't just, and again, I love Frankie. He knows exactly how I feel about him, but it's, it, it, it was actually a group, not a solo singer. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says, right. I don't care about the musicians, it's a little hard to say, I don't care about the musicians because that's the music. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. so and, thing, and Roland, the way so, Frank okay. writes... Hold tight, one second, Ron, go ahead. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, Frank would come to us with the song completed with an acoustic guitar. And cats would come up with their own lines, patterns, groove... And we all created that style. And in that, uh, you can never say, of course, Frank is a solo artist, writer, producer, but it's always been band first. And without the band, uh, Frank, if he wanted to, could have been a solo artist. But it's also why when you, when you, when you play so, the Frank intro of some songs, the audience already knows what the song is before they even hear one lyric. Go ahead. I don't know who was speaking. I'm going to go to Jubal first and then come back that to you. Was, go ahead. He could have been a solo artist, but he chose not to. And I would tell people all the time, Frankie was the last person to walk on the stage every night. Right. He would not go on that stage without the band. So for me personally, when management told me I was an independent contractor, man, that was so hurtful, man. Because that's never what even Frankie said. Mm -hmm. Frankie said, no, we are a band. We are a band. And the reason why the people loved it so much, because that's what you heard. You heard a band. Yeah, we were being led by an amazing artist, but it's a band, man. You the know, it's, it's an 18 wheeler. Undeniable. It's an 18 wheeler, undeniable. and he was driving that thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, 
But it is what it is. Okay, yeah. Who I was speaking, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, yeah, what I wanted Bear, to add Bear, go ahead. to that, what I wanted to say was, no artist is an island. No one. I don't. I don't care who was singing. I don't care who wrote the songs. Those people that are that they in, that they incorporate in that <laughs> con- conglomeration, that group, that whatever it is, there's a certain DNA that each musician brings to the table that makes or breaks that that music and for us for someone like you said to to say well i don't care who's playing you know it's 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 kind of um i'll say it it's insulting to to someone who has been in the trenches um as long as as long as i have as long as we have with this with this group we it's our dna for the last 20 20 years for me well, it's, 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 our it's, DNA. it's sort of like when the Funk you know. Brothers, uh, when, when the documentary came out and people finally mm-hmm. got a chance right. to know who these yeah. artists are, who actually played on more number one hits than yes, anybody sir. else. You can't, right. so you, right. you can't have a conversation about the Motown sound right. and you call it right. the Motown sound, but you're only talking about the artists without front, without understanding, yes, how those songs came together yeah, the, and, how, uh, and, and how it's put together. Yeah, the, I, a lot of people go ahead. The creativity <clears throat> came from everyone, it, it, and it always has with us and, and most uh, artists that I know of. I mean, there's some solo artists and some exceptions. Prince played everything, right. so he didn't really need to do what Frank did, but for the most part. <laughs> Uh, it's been a band, and ben, and Frank is a band guy. That's why he wasn't a solo artist. No, wrong. Even even Prince live, he had to have those players, oh, and he they rehearsed exactly. for six months right. before they went on tour because he had to massage those DNAs right. to make it what it was for that tour, that Whether moment. The power generation or any other different. Right. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. And I also wanted to say this too, and I I used to say this to Frank all the time, like the music is bigger than the people that created it. The music stands. And there we had some backlash when we first started this thing. How dare you guys go and play that music? And I would say, people, have you been to a local club lately? There's a million tribute bands Absolutely. that's Absolutely. playing <laughs> this music. Right here in D.C. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I was in Birmingham and the group was playing. Mean, I mean, I, whenever I travel the country, I like to go listen to live music. So mm-hmm. I've been, I, when I, I was in St. Louis, when I was in Birmingham, I'll be anywhere. I'm like, yo, I'm going to go hear some live music. And you're going to hear, uh, and then what's going to happen, you're going to hear the whole audience uh, 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 singing the song. Uh, and again, and, and they know the musical parts as well as the lyrics. And so they understand all of it. Right. Hold tight one second, go to a break. We come back. Uh, we're going to play uh, your new single. We're going to talk about uh, what is the new road ahead for uh, TMF. Folks, you're watching uh, this exclusive interview right here on Roller Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. We'll be right back in a moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 dash. 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zell is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. On the next Get Wealthy with me, Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach, are you trying to figure out how to earn more revenue in your business during these volatile times? Learn how to tap into the largest marketplace in the world through government contracting. Our next guest, Akia Hardnett, will be sharing how you can get wealthy through government contracting. We've got a young lady, government uh, assistance to government contracts. She literally was um, 
on government assistance when she came to us in, in less than a year. She has been winning um, multiple government contracts and it has changed the trajectory of her family. That's right here, only on Black Star Network. Farquhar, executive producer of Proud Family. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. by TMF. Uh, so um, how did that song uh, come together? Where did it start? Chris? Yep. You wrote it. Yeah, I wrote it, um, of course, with these guys in mind. And um, I knew what they would bring to it. And they brought it to life. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a sensual song. It's, it's grown folks music, which is something that I, I, I believe is missing today. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So you say uh, grown folks music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's grown up. I mean, it's, uh, it's real live musicians. We counted on <laughs> the hit Put from top to bottom. Tried it again. Made our corrections, made our edits, put our life into it, put our energy to it. And uh, we're very secure on who we are. We're very solid on uh, not, not intimidated by the market. We love this space. We love how it feels. It feels true to us when we put it in our music. Barry, you're there in Chicago. I understand the Steppers are loving it there. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. It's um, it's so it's so funny. When we were putting it together, I had not thought about it um, being a Steppers track. But when I played it in the car, I think we had we had done a uh, the M Memorial Day show or, or something, and I came back home and and put it in. I was like, well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> this is a Steppers track. So, yeah, the, the Steppers DJs here in town are uh, really embracing it, and they are loving, loving what we're doing. And, and Roland, I noticed, I, you know, I was kind of watching you. I saw you getting ready to, to get up and start doing some steps. I saw you. Oh, first of all, get, <laughs> get, let's, be, let's, be, I saw you. let's be real clear, okay? <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm way... Look, I played, I played what, cornet in elementary school, bass, baritone, horn okay. in uh, okay. middle school, high school. Uh, my brother played trumpet, sister played clarinet, one played flute. Uh, so uh, mom sang with her sister. So, so I, I'm always getting music. So me dancing, that ain't nothing new. Uh, I've so seen you, them dancing many, many. Come on now, that ain't nothing hey, new. Hey. So, you know, look. Brother, ain't... get down. Oh, yes, absolutely. Because <laughs> no, I, I, li I like good music. I like good music. Uh, how do you know, how do you know, Jubal, I'll, I'll start with you this. How do you know when, uh, a, so, when, when a song, when it's done and you go, yeah, that's hitting right. That, that, that's hitting right. Because it, it, not all, not everything does that. But how do you know when, when you go, that's it? Well, from my perspective, take this song, for instance. When, when he brought it to us, he said, hey, man, you guys just do your thing, right? So we were all just honest. We were all honest, but everybody's bad. Like, 
most humbly, we're some bad brothers on, on, our, on our instruments. So what, what we had to do is come in a mind of production. It's not live. To, you know, we're producing this right. right now, right? And so when we all went back in the room, it's like, wow, man, this, this feels good. It feels good. And we, we really did. We knew. We really knew, man. Mm -hmm. And it was like, like he said, it was just a fact of, okay, how's the market going to take this? But, and, and I'm going to take something from Kanye. We're the market. We're the market. And that's how we're feeling about it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to do this music and you're going to love this music or you're going to feel ridiculously dumb for not loving this music. <laughs> and it was so easy to record as well as easy for him to produce, you know? It makes it all easy for everybody because, again, the one thing we have live as well in the studio is the chemistry. And that's big, you know, and anything you do, if you have that, that's special. And we've had that with Maze as well as TMF. And I think, Calvin, that's the, that's the thing. Um, I remember uh, for years when I was in Chicago, WVN Radio, um, and then even when I uh, when I did the um, uh, the special on Bays and Frankie Beverly for TV One, and I would ask people all around the country, I would say, "What is it about the music? Why do black people respond the way they do?" Uh, and it was always these very interesting answers that people would give, whether it was Cornel West or Susan Taylor or Michael Dyson or Usher, all this sort of people. Um, and, the, and the thing about it was the most, the most important thing people would say is they would say how it makes us feel. Mm -hmm. And I think that's at the end of the day, when you listen even to this song, how do you feel listening to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. K got the one word. Yeah, he like that's it. <laughs> Vance, go ahead. Man, that's that's what I've always been about music, man. Even when I play, it's all about how it feels to me, and that's what this thing just. Our whole band just when we first did the song, it just seemed to just felt like I felt like I I felt like I wrote it. That's how much, that's how much it felt good to me. So I'm, a, I'm in agreement with it about how it makes me feel. Chris, as a songwriter, as a songwriter, explain to the public how when you write something, writing it, it looks totally different than how it comes out. So for you, seeing how the lyrics were received and then what the output was. Well, to be honest with you, I don't write the songs. I'm just a vessel that God uses to get the music out. Um, sometimes I'll sit down and play one note on, on the keyboard and a whole song will just appear. And um, I think it's just the Holy Spirit working through me um, to help people feel good. And, and the thing about it is when I'm in the moment and I'm, and I'm writing it, it's like I get excited about it. And if I get excited about it, I believe that'll translate to someone else because of how I'm receiving it. So that that's that's my process and and whether it's i'm writing jazz gospel r&b it doesn't matter whatever the holy spirit gives me that's what comes out <laughs> all right oh i get it look i don't i don't write speeches i just ask them how much time i got <laughs> I do. boom boom <laughs> no, really, I don't. all right i don't i don't even write i gave a speech once it was so funny this woman's like oh my god that was amazing we want to print the whole thing in our black newspaper i was like y'all better get somebody to transcribe it <laughs> she's like can i get your notes i said baby ain't no notes She's like, you don't have any note cards? I'm like, nope, that's all on top of my head. That's I said, so transcribe it. That's one of, that's one of your gifts. <laughs> Period. That's one of your gifts. And so when you, and that, but that's the thing that, I, again, I think for a lot of people, again, when I, I, go, I go back to the music. So I said it earlier. I said it earlier. Um, uh, and Bear, you can answer this. When anybody here has gone to a Maze Feature Frank and Beverly concert, you could play the first 10 seconds of a song, you play the first five seconds, in many, in many cases three seconds, and then the audience knows what the song is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's when people understand the power of the music. So again, mm -hmm. lyrics are one thing, music is another, and when those two things come together, that's what makes 
a great song. Bear, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's totally that's totally true. Um, you know, we we would have uh, when we were doing when we were touring as mates. You know, it, like you said, we we come out with "We Are One." Just the first ba da da da, they know that immediately. They stand up immediately. Those first three notes, um, and it's just a magic when, like you said, when the lyric and the melody and the and the uh, music and the uh, musicianship come together. Um, it's it's an amazing uh, blessing. And so the other thing that I wanted to mention is the fact that we're talking about the process. We actually have a mini documentary that we did um, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel called TMF Making Love to the Music, the studio sessions that actually shows our process and how we put the song together. Um, it's about 11 minutes long. It's not long at all. But if people want to check that out, they can go to our um, YouTube. And that's all of our social media, by the way, is TMF The Soul Band. At TMF The Soul Band. So wherever they want to go. But yeah, people should check that out. It's a really cool um, way to see the process and how we put the whole thing together. Cool, cool. Let's talk about um, album. So are you working on it now? Yeah, yeah we have something coming out uh, next year. Uh, around February, I believe it is. That's the target. And uh, everyone will be writing. We're going to have everyone submit, you know, their own thing. So you're going to be hearing original material. And then live, I'm thinking uh, we're going to always <coughs> do the maze guns, you know, the hits. But it'll be pretty much a TMF set. All right, so everybody's going to be writing. So do y'all have like a Motown, Barry Gordy set up? Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, so, 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 how y'all go 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 about what makes the cut? It's a consensus. It's a consensus. Yeah. We, like, have to unanimous. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Does it? Does it? No four three votes. Mm. Is it us? <laughs> is it truly us? Or, you know, is it something? We're we're working on something right now where we were. We gotta. Do we have to bend it? How much do we have to do to it to make it us? Maybe it's not us. Maybe it's one of us individually, but not. TMF, you know. Okay. So, but we we are all songwriters, we're all producers, and that's the beauty about this thing too, because we all kind of know. Yeah, this is this this is gonna work for us, you know. And if it doesn't work for us, it works for someone else. You know? Yeah, and each cat has a different narrative, you know. As far as the writing goes, uh, again, these cats. I'm so glad to be around them because, see, I've been with Frankie for 55 years. These cats have been around with different musicians, played on albums. So it's just, I keep telling them, you're keeping me young. I'm 55. <laughs> Well, about bringing different styles and dynamics and different styles. 55, styles. what am I saying? Yeah, I, I yeah. was looking like... 74, I'm sorry. See, you know you're old when you say you're 55. I mean, I'll be 55 in two weeks. I was like... Right. Like, I'm sitting like, I'll be 55 November 14th. I was like, really? Really? Yeah, my bad. But I also wanted to mention with the May songs, Before I Let Go, a May's anthem, and I don't think there's any black, Party, barbecue. Oh, no, no. It's, it's the second, I'm, I'm, it's the second on, national black anthem. That's it. Yep. Yes, sir. It's the staple. Right. So before I, I, I've said it plain time. Before I let go is the second national black anthem. And Can't We Talk by Tevin Campbell is, 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 is close to becoming the third. It's going to take swag. I'm going to see if swag surfing is still around 10 years from now. <laughs> see if that, that makes the cut. Uh, but, but, right, but right now, without a doubt, before I let go, it, it lift their voice and sing, and before I let go. Yes, sir. So that's why I gave a speech. I gave a speech, and somebody said, they said, we about to sing, lift it. Somebody said, we about to sing the Black National Anthem. And I was like, you about to sing before I let go? That's what I'm about to do. I mean, that, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. Yes, uh, sir. Chris, tell us about uh, this, uh, this work on this first album. Um, it's, it's magic. I mean, so far we recorded five songs. And, um, you know, it, when I tell you, th the synergy is there. And I think um, the people are going to feel it. And, um, and the musicianship, like, like each guy has stated, has been amazing. I mean, the, the songs pretty much play themselves. So we're excited to, to get on the road and perform it live for the people. So, yeah. you know, right. sky's the limit. All right, final thoughts. Uh, Calvin, you first. No one word answers. 
<laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, man. I just, you know, these guys rolling are, everybody in this band, man, is just, they're super talented, you know, super gifted. And uh, it's been said earlier tonight, um, I think Jubal mentioned it and Rome mentioned it. There's a chemistry here, man. You can, you can put guys together, right? <clears throat> but you can put some bad guys together. But if there's no chemistry, you know what I'm saying? Because chemistry is everything. It's just like in relationships. If you don't have the right chemistry, you know, it's just not going to work. And just like outside of the music and off the stage, I've grown, you know, um, in relationship with these guys through, you know, it's, 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 it's love here, man. It's just nothing but love. And then like when we get on our instrument, it just translates, man. It's just so pure. We can sit down at our instruments on the sound check, man, and we can just strike up a groove. Everybody falls in place. It's just like, it's, it's amazing, man. And I'm just praying that, you know, whatever whatever uh, opportunities God has for us, man, that, that we'll walk into all of those, you know? And uh, I'm just I'm just looking forward to this uh, this new journey, man, and this new chapter with these guys. And, and, and much respect to Frankie Beverly, because like Larry said and all the other guys, I love him. I think we all love him. And uh, that's where I am, man. Thanks so much for having us on, Roland. I Vance. appreciate you, man. I appreciate it, Vance. What's up? I feel the same way. We brought, uh, with Frankie Beverly, you know, the audience came to enjoy and we came to play. And it, the, the synergy was just amazing. So we want to do the exact same thing uh, with what we have right now because we're all coming from love and from spirit. And we want to give that to the people because we know that they'll enjoy it, and we and it's coming. Know it's coming from our hearts, and so just come out, check us out. You know, I can't wait to, to, for y'all to hear all the stuff that we have in the box for you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I'm glad people. <clears throat> like I'm truly glad that people still respect it, feel it, honor it, uh, and the system has caused a lot of people to be programmed on what's hot mm -hmm. or what's good but uh, you have a band of brothers here that really just stick true to our instruments but well, what's hot uh, and good don't always last hot and good don't always last but what feels good connects to people you know people know what feels right they know what came from the heart see and I call I'm, it all shit music <laughs> <laughs> you can say that no, see, you, know, you listen to a song you like that's a nice song yeah. but then with a wait you're like oh hey, shit that's, that's, <laughs> my that's, that's, that's my joint see, everything don't rise to an all shit yeah. song people know so. <laughs> yeah they know they know what they know what's right and, and we don't always give them enough credit we don't always give the listener enough credit right but I'm glad to be a contributor I'm glad to be a part of it and uh, never knew 34 years ago this is where we'll be sitting and talking about extending live music. But we're here and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep grinding. Chris, well, the the only thing I would like to ask is that um, for the for the public is just to keep TMF lifted in prayer and also to keep Frank and his camp lifted in prayer. Uh, this is this is not easy, especially from my perspective because. You know, uh, of course, Frankie can never be replaced, but but singing those songs and honoring him is is is, is truly uh, like a lifelong lifelong dream for me. Um, so I just ask people to keep both camps lifted in prayer as we embark on this new journey as TMF. Jubu, the word for me is consistency. What has made Mays featuring Frankie Beverly the iconic group that they are? Consistency, Frank was consistency. He taught me consistency. What's leading TMF now, I'll give you a small secret. What has gotten us to this place, every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock without fail, we have a Zoom meeting. That Zoom meeting starts with prayer, then we go down the list of what we're trying to accomplish till we get to next Wednesday. That Zoom meeting ends with prayer. We are all God-loving, God-fearing men. And we have faith and we're going to be consistent. And like Chris said, all we ask is that you come and enjoy the music. That's all we ask for because there's, there's no animosity towards where we were in our past. We're just looking toward the future and we want everybody to be blessed. There. 
Wow. I mean, it's uh, it's an incredible uh, place that we're in right now. Um, again, just piggybacking off of what everybody else said, uh, nothing but love uh, for Frank and, uh, and, and his camp. And nothing but love for these guys here in TMF and our new journey together. Um, you know, the, the music is not only reaching here in the States, Roland, but it's also now catching fire over in Europe and, and the UK. And we could not be happier about that. We're, we're gearing up to really hit every place we can hit because people are I, on our social media. People are like, come to Detroit, come to come to Buffalo, come to <laughs> come to this place, come to that place, and you know, and I and I'm usually you know responding. I'm like, yeah, we're we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. But that's really where where this band uh, lives. We love the studio, but it's a it's a live band. We love and live for live, and so yeah, like everybody says, we just wanted you guys to come out, have a great time, and um, connect with TMF. Online as well as uh, we do live shows. Where are y'all next? Detroit. When? Uh, 24th of 24th November. 24th of November, day after okay. Thanksgiving. And Mr. Martin, personally, um, thank you for sharing your platform with us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I when you own it. Rome, you get to close that. Yeah, I want to also, we go back a long way, man. Thank you for your support. Well, we'll go back 55 years. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, yeah, thank you so much, man, because you've been a part of that journey as well. Thank you for this opportunity, because this is big. You know, this is what we need exposure. We need people to see us and see what we're about. You've given us that opportunity. So, and again, for the fans, uh, we, we love the fact that you're so, still supporting us. And we want you to continue support TMF as well. And thanks, brother. We this means a lot. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Trust me. I appreciate yes, it. Yes, sir. Uh, when yeah. uh, Nell sent me the song, I was like, "All right, I see we got a groove." Okay, okay. <laughs> I was in the car, so I couldn't dance. Uh, but I'm always so I always, I always play music on my Instagram live. Uh, I'm always doing that. Uh, and and the thing about it is, for me, the, the what, I, what I love about music is. Um, you could be in a bad mood, you could be awful, you could have got fired, your woman could have left you, your man could have left you, you could have failed, failed a grade or whatever, but you put cert some, certain songs on, it's going to completely transform your mind, transform your energy. It makes you remember mother and father, it makes you remember, oh, yeah. I, mean, nostalgic. I mean, all yeah. of that, you yeah, have markers in life, and so I think that's what... Uh, that's what great music does. Uh, and again, as somebody who played the band, I have a different appreciation for musicians. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with folk who sing the, uh, all kind of electronic stuff, but it's something different when, 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 when that live band is really getting good one. So I really hope the people uh, certainly uh, appreciate what y'all are doing. Uh, Frankie still travels. He still performed with Mace Absolutely. featuring Frankie Beverly. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I remember when I did the story, people there were some people who were it was all on social media speculating. Oh, he's retiring, and I you know I hit him, I hit him, I hit Pam. I was like, hey, is this true or not? Because uh, that's me. I'm I'm always check right first. On. I'm gonna hit folks direct. <laughs> Uh, and it was so funny. Reve called me upset. Why you didn't call me? I'm like, well, I hit the source first. I said, hell, I don't go to number two. I go to number one. That's how I roll. I said, please. I said, that's how I roll. So that's, uh -uh, I'm I'll, sure she has some four letter words. I ain't, I ain't kidding. I'll, I'll, I tell everybody, I don't go through conduits. I go right, right to the source. Get this, get that's what I did. So, uh, so glad to see he's still doing his thing. Mad love for him. And again, uh, the music will live on. And so I appreciate this. Uh, and this is also why and I tell my, and we'll close it out with this and I tell the audience this all the time. This is also why we have to have black owned media because the reality is this here. Uh, you know, we've been chatting now probably about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, and look, I know how the CNNs of the world operate, know how they work. And the reality is they wouldn't see any value whatsoever. But we have black owned. We get to control it. We get to own it. Mm -hmm. And we got to ask permission. Uh, and I hope a lot of people who are watching uh, learn from it. Uh, and now, and now, and again, and now understand uh, the backstory. Now, folks don't have to run around because uh, I've heard a lot of those rumors too. Uh, oh, they were plotting. They were it was, ma it was a mastermind. All this sort of stuff like that. Uh, and people now get to, get to have uh, understanding. Uh, and again, appreciate the music. So, uh, so let me thank uh, Calvin, Vance, Chris, uh, and Bear. Thank y'all for uh, joining us via Skype. Uh, hopefully, I will see y'all somewhere soon. I ain't gonna be hard to spot. 
uh, cause I'm gonna be the one uh, spinning and moving. I'm just letting y'all know. Okay. <laughs> and if there's anything we can do for you, man, keep us in mind. I appreciate it. You got us. I appreciate it, Jim. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, good luck you, uh, with the album. Good luck uh, touring, folks. That is it for us. Don't forget support us in what we do. Uh, of course, uh, remember later this week we're going to be in Virginia. Uh, we're going to be actually be in Richmond, Virginia. So that's going to be on Thursday. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, support is what we do. Again, our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing on average 50 bucks each. That's $4.19 a month, 13 cents a day. It raises a million dollars for us. I think to pay for what we do. Like I say, we're fighting the battle every single year with our advertisers. You know how it is. They support mainstream media. They don't support black-owned media. So that continues. So please, uh, send your check and money orders. All the folks who don't believe in electronic stuff, I get it. I go pick up y'all 30 checks and money orders every week. Y'all old school. But guess what? It all is all real money. Uh, we don't do Bitcoin here. Uh, send your check and money order to P.O. Box 57196. Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zale is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. And, of course, you can also uh, download the Black Shot Network app, Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. You can also see our 24-hour, 7-day-week streaming channel. We're now on four fast channels. Amazon News, so simply go to Amazon Fire and go to Amazon News. Tell Alexa play news from the Black Star Network so you can hear that audio over the Alexa. Also, check us out on Plex TV on their 24-hour uh, streaming service as well as Amazon Freebie and Amazon Prime Video. So when you look at the live TV grid on Amazon Prime Video, we're right there with ABC, NBC, and CBS. We're the only black-owned uh, daily, a black-owned news and information network uh, in the country. And so support us that way. And don't forget to copy, get a copy of my book, White Fear, How the Browning of America is Making White Folks Lose Their Minds. Available uh, from Ben Bella Books. You can get it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, Books a Million, and download the audio version. Yep, I read it as well unaudible folks that's it uh, i'll see you tomorrow right here on roller martin unfiltered on the black star network Holla!